What's going on everybody? It's your man Desert Eagle and I'm back at you with another video. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Um, Donald McNabb, Carson Wentz. But in the meantime, as y'all looking to subscribe, y'all going to hit that subscribe button. I'll wait. Let's talk about it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. This whole Don McNabb and Carson Wentz thing. Well, let's say mainly uh, Don McNabb because uh, Carson Wentz isn't really, you know, you know, he's not really. Um, I don't think Carson Wentz is really making a big deal, but more likely it's the fans. But this is becoming too much of a distraction from something we're supposed to be very excited for in uh, two days. And that's the draft. <sighs> Look, if I made this video sooner, uh, the very day when I heard, I'm not going to lie. I was going to rant. And I was going to clown down with McNabb. But as I realized as time went by, I realized, like, it's really not big of a deal. I mean, just because it's, you know, Don McNabb that said it doesn't really 100% make it a fact. I mean, he's partially right, but to a certain extent. Did he, should he have said those things? Not really. I mean, you would think, being as though that McNabb, you know, is, uh, you know, the best quarterback we had in our franchise. I mean, I would say arguably, you know, some people would say Randall Cunningham, you know. And, of course, people, fans, you know, that mostly went, uh, that only seen Donald McNabb. I mean, me, you know, I would, though I was a fan, you know, when Bobby Hoyne was here. You know, the next year we drafted McNabb. Of course, you know, I, I would probably say, you know, McNabb is the uh, best in our friend, uh, you know, best quarterback in our franchise. But uh, some people, like I say, some people will say it's uh, Randall Cunningham. It's a, it's, it's a good argument. But I mean, you know, Don McNabb has won us playoff games. He's won us uh, one division for us several times. And, uh, you know. We've been to five NFC uh, championships, but only one we've, uh, only one that we end up winning go to the Super Bowl. Except the problem is, if uh, you know, before we even had a Super Bowl, you know, we will always bring that up, you know. And of course, when you deal with fan bases, you know, that's that's witnessed the Super Bowl. Let's say, you know, let's say, you know, like Cowboys fans or Giant. Oh my bad. Let's go a little recent. Giants fans, Patriots fans, Steelers fans, Seahawks fans, you know, fans like them, that's that's witnessed it. You know, of course, they're going to look at that, you know, you know, if you don't, if you ain't winning the Super Bowl, it's going to be nothing but a season accomplishment. That's pretty much what it is. Doesn't mean a damn thing. Doesn't matter how many playoff games you got, no matter how many times you won a division, no matter how many times you've even visited a Super Bowl or been, you know, NFC, uh, championship none of that means a damn thing if you ain't win the super bowl and i realize you know because after you know even though mcnab may be the best quarterback in our franchise but is he our most accomplished one is he our most successful one not really no that was the case until a, you know another quarterback that wasn't donald mcnab definitely got the job done and that was nick Foles. and it's funny because Nick Foles was also another person that Donald McNabb has criticized, saying that, you know, Nick Foles is not good enough to be a franchise quarterback. See, I mean, and, and you would think that being though Donald McNabb was uh, criticized, you would think he would be the same one to come out, you know, and congratulate Nick Foles because before he did criticize him prior to that, he was nowhere to be found. I haven't heard from him, none of that. This whole time, all he all he's done was criticize the Eagles and criticize the players. So I mean, if that right there doesn't at least say in the slightest that McNabb is a hater, then I don't know what to tell you. But in the end, 
That is, that's McNabb's opinion. And I'm not, I, I, I just can't get mad for it. Why, why would I be mad? It's his opinion. I mean, he'd he be on national television just like Skip Bayless or, you know, even though um, McNabb got fired. I don't know if he's still there or not. I don't really care anymore, you know. I mean, I, I've enjoyed, you know, the moments with him back then. But right now, I just don't care. I really don't care. He's the past. He's the past. Andy Reid is the past. I mean, he was in, you know, he was there as long as, uh, uh, well, Reid was there until 2012. McNabb, I mean, but still, both of them is the past. They didn't win a Super Bowl, so I don't really care. I just don't care. He's going to, you know, and the Chiefs won't win a Super Bowl as long as they got Andy Reid either. You know, no matter how many times we say it, you know, they just have to see for themselves. You know, but McNabb, you know, why would I be mad about the guy? Why? What's the point? Is he a hater for what he's saying? Yes, he is. Because the guy, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, it, 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 but you know what's funny? You know what's funny about McNabb? Another reason why I can't be mad. If anything, I'm mad at the fact that he's a hypocrite. The same exact person that talked about how Carson Wentz was a ball player. You know, he's number two for a reason. He's the number two pick for a reason. He's going to have a good career. He's, pro you know, it's promising. He even let his son. He even brought his son to the locker room to meet Carson Wentz. He even shook his hand and everything. Like, he's a hypocrite. If that right there doesn't say he's a hypocrite or fake, I don't know what to tell you then. But just because Don McNabb is an analyst or he's on ESPN or whatever, it doesn't make it a fact. It just don't. They just get paid to speak an opinion. It doesn't make it right at all. So, I mean, I'm not mad, you know, I'm not really mad anymore that McNabb um, said what he said about Carson Wentz. I don't really care. I don't really care anymore. Because in the end, Carson Wentz is my quarterback, and I know how great he is. But I do say this. I, di I If anything, I disagree morally. I disagree morally on Don McNabb. Yes, we do have some concerns about, you know, Carson Wentz and his health issues and his mistakes and everything. But that's all part of football. Every quarterback, every elite quarterback has been hurt. Ben Roethlisberger's been hurt. Tom Brady's been hurt. I don't, I don't know if Russell Wilson's been hurt, but um, Aaron Rodgers's been hurt. Drew Brees's been hurt. Come on, a lot of quarterbacks have been hurt. Great quarterbacks are average. It doesn't even matter. Well, if it's, I think, I'm going to say Ryan Tannehill is like average. But he's been hurt. Marcus Mariota got what it takes to be good, but he's he's injury prone. When everyone say that Carson Wentz is injury prone, obviously they don't know who Marcus Mariota is. They obviously don't know Jordan Hicks or Jay Ajayi or, 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 or Sean Lee, you know? Those are what you call injury prone. So, I mean, yeah, Carson Wentz has torn his ACL just like any other quarterback, but guess what? He had, I, I, even though he may have somewhat lost his step, but he was still doing good. He's still doing good. He, he fractured his back. You know, it happens in the NFL. But the reason why I say I'm not concerned, I'm not worried about it, though Cowboys fans wish I was. They wished I was. They wish I turned my back on Carson Wentz. They would wish that I would say he's terrible. Why would I say that when it's far from true? I'll tell you quarterbacks that was terrible. Sam Bradford, <laughs> terrible. Vince Young, terrible. Chase Daniels, terrible. Don't, I'll admit, they are terrible. Michael Vick, I enjoyed having him here, but he didn't really, you know, get us the playoff win. doesn't really matter anymore. Michael Vick, I enjoyed having him here. Donald McNabb, I enjoyed having him here. Nick Foles, before, even before he won the Super Bowl, I enjoyed having him here. My favorite moment before this whole playoff run, the underdog story and everything, my, my favorite game besides the seven touchdown game against Oakland, my favorite game was the snow game against against the Lions. Against the Lions. I will never forget about that game. I was working at Pet Boys at the time. I was, you know, working in the garage. And, you know, and I would have to watch through the glass. But then again, when it was, like, dead and no customers were coming, we, we ordered pizza from, I think it was Papa John's. I think it was Papa John's before the whole racist shit happened, you know. I can't remember if it was Papa John's or Domino's. I mean, I think it was Papa John's because they had a special deal going. They always have a special deal going on, you know. I think, you know, when the Phillies, Phillies or Flyers, it was one of those games. You know, there was so, it was a, such a special deal. We get so many boxes, you know, 
you know, so many topics, whatever. The whole racist shit, it wasn't even a thing back then. You know, Peyton Manning was the manager or whatever he, the fuck he was doing. You know, whatever. Pizza was good. You know, we all, you know, were going to the, you know, the waiting room where the TV is. We would cheer, root for the team, eat pizza, drink soda, do all that kinds of good stuff, you know. I enjoyed every moment of it. But, you know, but the whole Donnie McNabb thing, I'm not tripping off of it. I, w I would have been if I first made the video, but I don't really care. Donald McNabb is the past. He's a hater. He's always going to be. In the end, Carson Wentz is now. He's the franchise. And whether, regardless of what he say, it's never going to change because we all know Carson Wentz is going to be, uh, he's going to be here for a long run. But I will say this, even though I'm not concerned about his injury, but what I would say just to be on the safe side is to focus on the offensive line as well to protect Carson Wentz so he won't have to run around when there's hardly any protection for him. So, I mean, but I'm going to say this. Shout out to Lane Johnson, though. And I know I know Nitro Freak was saying that, you know, Lane Johnson was uh, only defending him because, you know, he was there. He doesn't, he didn't have to. He didn't have to step up and defend him. Donovan McNabb is a snake for what he did. Because, I mean, and he wonder why he doesn't get the respect. I mean, he does get the respect, but it's not on the level of Don, uh, 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 Brian Dawkins. It's not on the level of Deuce Staley. It's not on the level of, um, who else is it? Um, Brian Westbrook. It's not on that level. The reason why it's not on that level is because McNabb always criticizes the logo and the players. That's why. You don't see Brian Dawkins doing that very often, unless it has to be said, you know, our defense, you know, Asante Samuel's another one. Asante Samuel's another one. I mean, you don't see them criticizing like the, like Donovan McNabb do. You don't even see them give props all like that. And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not necessarily going to believe the words that he said, you know, he tried to clarify because he should have said all of that before he before he spoke his mind. He should have said all of that already. So in my opinion, it's my opinion. I think McNabb is wrong. I think he's wrong. I disagree. Do I 100% disagree? No, but it's enough. You know, I would say a good over 70%. I disagree. You can't say Carson Wentz is... Um, only got two years to bring an NFC championship. Like, bro, first of all, it's not solely on the quarterback. It's the whole team. It's the whole team. Like last year, we could say it wasn't Carson Wentz, but then again, I mean, he he should have he should have like you know, um, how do you say? He should have sat down. You know, we had we was playing with a bad back, especially against the Saints. Hence, is why he threw those three interceptions. He should have sat. He should have sat down, and I agree with that. But at the same time, we got to put that on the defense. The defense was atrocious. Defense was atrocious, and we can't say because Darby was out. We can't say because Rasul Douglas and Avante Maddox or you know uh, Derek Barnett or any other players were out. Even when they all was in, we was doing bad. We wasn't doing a good job at all because of Jim Schwartz. But still, our defense was atrocious. Jim Schwartz was atrocious. Mike Grow was atrocious. Our offensive line was atrocious. The list goes on. It wasn't just solely on Carson Wentz. So you know what? He should have put out better words. He should have put out better words. Maybe if he was to say that if Carson Wentz does not take us to the NFC Championship, I would say five years, then okay. At least five years, that'd be more understanding. But he tried to make it seem like it was solely on Carson Wentz, and that's why maybe he got the shit that, you know, from this fan base but at the same time I'm not going to you know let this distract me too much from the draft you know the only the, the only time the next time I'm going to talk about this will be in our hangout will be in our hangout other than that I don't think it's worth making multiple videos about but I'm going to say this shout out to Lane Johnson for defending Carson Wentz you know I'm surprised Jason Kelsey ain't really saying much but then again Jason Kelsey does need to sit out for you know for a couple games i mean the guy is a fucking soldier he's been he's been playing he playing with a torn mcl all this crazy shit like i can't name them all but it said he was playing with like seven or eight injuries i don't know how he still does it 
you know, still snapping the ball, still blocking, still doing what he can. I think he needs to sit out, maybe for a whole season or so. Because he, I, I just don't, you know, we need to beef up this offense while we can. And as much as I love Jason Kelsey, I did give him a lot of shit back then. I did give him a lot of shit. But now, you know, I'm very thankful. He was very involved with us winning the Super Bowl, you know, as far as protection. But right now, we need to, he needs to be careful. I'm okay with Jason Kelsey playing for many more years to come. But he needs to sit out for now. He needs to, he needs to rest. All right? He needs to rest. But that's that. Donovan McNabb, if you're going to talk about Carson Wentz, say what you have to say. How about you make it right? And, you know, if you want to get the respect, how about do this? Why don't you be a mentor of Carson Wentz? I know a lot of people ain't going to agree. But why don't you just be a mentor of Carson Wentz instead of constantly, how do you say, criticizing him? How about you mentor him? to meet up to your expectations. How about, instead of you bashing him, how about you help him eliminate any flaws? You know, as far as, you know, even though he's got a great arm, he does, you know, but is, is it the best arm in the world? No, but it's good enough to throw deep passes. I mean, we saw we saw what he do with Alshon Jeffrey. We saw what he do with Toy Smith. We saw what he do with, um, you know, Jordan Matthews, excuse me, and the list goes on. And Nelson Aguilar. Is it the best arm? No. Is it legit? Yes, but not the best. How about you help him improve it more? How about you help him, you know, be more patient or throw the ball a lot quicker when there's an opportunity? How about you help him do that instead of constantly bashing him? Because in the end, if you're not going to help him at least meet up to your expectations or help him, like, at least catch up to your numbers, if you're not going to help him, then why, then what's the point? Why are you, why are you constantly bashing him? All you're doing in the end is proving that you're a hater. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So, I mean, I know this is a long video, but I figure I'll just let it all out. Say what I have to say. It's not a rant. It's not the bash Donald McNabb. It's not the bash anyone. If, any, if anyone I should be bashing is my own families. I should be bashing them, especially on Twitter. Because all they, all they're doing is talking more about this situation than they're talking about the draft. Like, let's talk about who we should draft in the first round. Let's talk about who we should draft, you know, in the second round or third round, you know, and the list goes on. Because all you're doing is letting this guy, who's not even playing for us anymore, who's been a constant known as a hater, all you're doing is letting him distract us from the draft, from the upcoming season. That's all you're doing. You're letting him distract from what our schedule coming up. I know the schedule is easy. I know it's cakewalk, but still. I mean, come on. Let's predict who what a what our record is going to be. I mean, I, I know some of y'all rather wait until the schedule. But never never hurts to predict before and after the draft. I mean, so far, realistically, I'm saying 11 and 5. I'm saying 11 and 5, but um that's it. I know I'm talking too much, but I figure I'll let it all out. Don McNabb, you know, if you're not going to help mentor Carson Wentz to eliminate any possible flaws that, you know, there is with him, then stop, like, leave, stop talking about the guy. Like, all you're going to do is continue bashing the Eagles. Maybe you're bashing because you're not getting the respect. I, I understand, you know, we got all the booze when we drafted, you know, whatever. But that that's just it. I'm speaking too much about it. I know I'm about soon to be 20 minutes in, so that's all I got to say. She made that you check on out of here. It is always and forever fly equals fly. Look, it doesn't matter if Carson Wentz, if it's Carson Wentz, it doesn't matter if it's Carson Wentz, Nick Foles, Nate Sudfield, or Lewis Perez, or any quarterback that's on the team. In the end, if you're the starting quarterback, that's who I'm going to defend. I mean, and of course, I'm going to bash him when it's needed. I mean, I bashed uh, Sam Bradford. I bashed Vincent Young. I bashed anyone that's played like shit. I've even bashed Donovan McNabb, even though I enjoyed watching him. I've bashed Carson Wentz with the mistakes. I am all about the logo. I am. I'm all about the logo. That you, you already know. You already know. I said I don't care whether it was Nick Foles or Carson Wentz. The logo is all that matters in the end. And Nick Foles. Nick Foles is, is hands down my favorite quarterback. My favorite player. Especially, especially after what happened with the, uh, the Houston Texans. 
I'm not gonna lie. I, I was very emotional. Very emotional. It all seemed like it, it was over, you know, after Nick Foles got hurt, you know, though I wasn't counting on Nate Subfield. But, you know, the guy, the guy came back. He turned that moment, you know, of him coming back after that crazy hit. He came back, ended up moving the ball down the field, and we kicked the field goal, and we won. Our playoff chances were still alive. <laughs> So I don't give a damn what a hater has to say. I don't give a damn what Donovan McNabb has to say or or, or, or or Cowboys fans or who the fuck ever. I don't give a damn. Carson Wentz is my quarterback. And I will ha I will gladly, gladly chance it with Carson Wentz, even with, you know, the injury situation, you know. I will gladly chance it with him. But what I'm saying is to be on the safe side, still build an offensive line to protect him regardless. So that's it, though. I know I'm saying the same shit over and over again, so I guess I'm going to end this video right now. It's your man, Desi, checking on out of here. Eagles fans, stop letting this situation, you know, distract you from the draft, distracting you from the upcoming season. Just stop that shit, man. Until next time, fly, Eagles, fly, and I'm out. I'll catch y'all in a couple days. Peace out.